I want you to help us as we take over the world and build the kingdom of God. You can help us by conducting legal, nonviolent attacks against those who oppose us in order to help advance our cause. I want you to help us as we take over the world and build the kingdom of God. You can help us by conducting legal, non-violent counter-attacks against those who oppose us if they try and stop us. I want you to help us as we take over the world and build the kingdom of God. You can help us by legally obtaining intelligence that will benefit us against those who oppose us. Proponents of democracy, capitalism, and Protestantism are going to be jumping mad like frogs when the evil spirits, demons in them, become agitated because of what we are doing. All I want to do is worship God. It is not necessary that I talk and act like a Jew or Arab in order to do so. Islam should be based entirely on worshiping God not promoting Arab identity, national pride. It is not necessary that I speak Arabic or take an Arabic name and wear the clothes of an Arab in order to love and serve and surrender to the God of all people. Allahu Akbar makes a lot of sense if you happen to speak Arabic. However, for the rest of us, saying God is great in a language we're most comfortable with will make the most impact on us. Some people are so mean and unkind that even the demons cringe when they think about the day that person dies because they know they're going to have to spend all eternity with them. Allah begets none is the ultimate satanic verse. How great is God if he can't have children? Unholy gospel music is any song that proclaims God has no son. Satan has no need to corrupt the Quran since it already serves his purpose of trying to take away all of God's children. He might as well leave it the way it is since it makes the untrue seem more credible. However, he doesn't have that same option with the Bible. The only way he can discredit the truth in the Bible is to make it look like it has been severely altered. I'll hook your ass up to a lie detector test if necessary before letting you into the kingdom to make sure you really believe me and aren't just saying it to get the blessings that come with it. Do you think the amount a believer is obligated to contribute was purposely lowered to only 2.5% by the founders of Islam merely as a ploy to get more people to join them since it was cheaper to be a Muslim than a Christian or a Jew? If 
if you're an atheist, you're really going to wish you were right by the time I'm done with you. Because I'm going to roast you. Saying that I would be a hundred percent sure if I was really Jesus is not realistic. Since there hasn't been a single prophet that I'm aware of that didn't show at least some level of doubt, reluctance, or shortcomings. Moses mentioned his inability to speak well. Jesus asked that the cup be taken from him. Muhammad had to check with his wife because he thought he might have a demon. All these are examples of prophets questioning their divine calling. As I mentioned, it would be unrealistic to think that they would have shown otherwise. So why should I be any different? Satan not only keeps your soul when you become a Protestant, but also the souls of any people that would have been saved if the church had not been made weaker due to your actions. The church can most effectively witness to the unsaved when there is love and unity among the body of Christ, which is being destroyed by Protestantism. Protestants think it's okay to ask another person to pray for them. Unless, of course, that person is married, a saint, or a priest. Their exclusion of the righteous as prayer partners doesn't make any sense without first considering the nature of the spirit that dwells within a Protestant. What God had made one church let no man separate and the two Protestants and Catholics shall become one flesh is a prophecy Satan uses the Protestants to divide the church because he knows that a house divided will fall. You're right. God will guard the Quran from corruption. However, if in fact I am God incarnate, then it really is God keeping the Quran from being corrupted when he has me make sure that it confirms the message which came before it. I'm supposed to believe that people were able to memorize and remember every single word uttered by Muhammad for the purpose of putting it in the Quran, but then they conveniently act like they don't have a clear sign or record of how old the little girl was that Muhammad slept with because they don't want to make Muhammad look like a pedophile. Some say she was nine years old and that he married her when she was six. 